Is Linux just a meme? There are a lot of people who have a lot of mixed opinions about this, but I have a unique opinion. And this is kind of as a response to Bread on Penguin's video just last week on the very same subject, because I think she missed a few points that I would actually like to kind of address. So first thing I want to just recognize right out of the gate is that most people are not Richard Stallman FSF type users. That's just not a reality. The fact of the matter is, is that most of us have hardware that requires some sort of proprietary software to make it usable. And not everybody wants to use a 15-year-old ThinkPad. For starters, you don't have the RAM capacity if you were going to use one of those old ThinkPads. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to be doing such a thing. The FSF hates snapbacks, right? I think that just goes without saying. And they have declared war on snapbacks because the website is closed source. Duh! Most websites are closed source and they need to be to prevent security breaches and that sort of thing. And you know what? Actually, if you read Canonical's statement, they just didn't want a whole bunch of different websites releasing snap packs or, you know, and confusing people and having like an experience very similar to the AUR in Arch Linux. It makes perfect sense to me. So, I actually use snap packs, for example. You know, I don't have time to mess around with like all these packages with Caden Live, with OBS, and that sort of thing. Can I make them from scratch? I absolutely can. It isn't always black and white as far as the open source thing is concerned. And so, when somebody says something about, oh, hey, DWM and the suckless utilities, they have like this, you know, holy grail of how software should be written. No, not even remotely true. As a developer myself, I can tell you that that is just patently false because of the simple fact that they use so many bad conventions when it comes to coding. Yes, they have a handle on the C language and they're able to basically break some of the rules and I don't fault them for it because then it reduces their user base so that smart people use their software and not just a bunch of normie morons. I get it. And that was the whole idea behind Cyclus to begin with. Hey, do you understand what the software is doing? Do you have a simple command of scripting language. Can you get around and see? Can you patch software? That sort of thing. So they wrote it in such a way that it would be really hard for someone to understand very clearly. The simple fact of the matter is, if they would have put a thousand more lines of code in, it would be infinitely easier to patch, therefore having a much better environment to work with. Now, don't get me wrong. I use DWM and I do use Dmenu. And I think this is a really good conversation to have today. So basically, this is my Asian rice of Spectre WM. And this is what I'm going to actually use to demonstrate what Linux minimalism is to me. And I think it'll be really easy for you to wrap your brain around and so let's kind of get into this. So I have the simple hotkey daemon installed. So basically if I do like an alt P and D, that uh, brings up a Rofi menu. And this could just as easily work with D menu. So I hit the selected item. Here are the nested files that are inside of my .pdf folder. So I can go to programming. Here are the programming files that are inside of my programming folder. And if I hit escape, I have all of my directories. So I can come right into here, say Python, for example, 
let's get a really good let's do that one real python and see i have this you know a pdf that comes out i used to have this uh tied to sathura but for note taking purposes i actually like events a little bit better it has a few more features that i need so i i tend to use that so in the future what i plan on doing is basically taking this concept and basically porting it into a, a NeoVim plugin and kind of going from there. And then that way I can um, basically pull up these PDFs, take the notes I need to take, and that sort of thing, and kind of use it kind of like as my second brain, like I do with Obsidian. And in fact, this is going to be kind of an Obsidian type plugin that I'm connected to my second brain or obsidian. It's a really, really cool thing that I'm working on. I've been working on it for a while. I, I have a couple of issues still that I haven't worked out. Once I get those worked out, I'm going to push it to get GitHub. That's one example of minimalism. There's another one I have. If I go Alt P plus M, I have my man pages. So let's just do a random one. So a random man page. Okay, let's do that one. Now this one opens this up with Sathura and kind of gives me an idea of the man pages. And the way I had it set up before is it would convert it into a PDF and then I would have that PDF forever. Well now this is opened in a temp folder and then destroyed as soon as I remove it. Now it's destroyed. That is kind of some of the things that I have accomplished with minimalism. This makes perfect sense. So let's do that one again. So let's, uh, ooh, this one's good. Let's do Barry, the Barry desktop, right? Okay, so we have a few things. They're going to kind of explain kind of how things are working or whatever. And that you can see like how to create an auto start file and a few other things. Let's uh, make this a little bit bigger. I guess I can't make that bigger. <laughs> okay. I need to alter my Sathura configuration, I guess. Um, no problem. Anyway. You get the point, though, is there's things that you do to keep your fingers on the fi uh, uh, on the keyboard. This is why people use Linux minimalism. Let's open up HTOP. Okay, we got HTOP. Let's open C matrix. Ooh, okay. Pseudo DNF install matrix. You can kind of use your shortcuts to kind of switch windows here. And I'm not very good at this, so don't, because I never use this. I use buffers and NeoVim personally. So basically you can use this to kind of leverage the space that you have on your desktop or on your monitor. And you can have like different applications open at the same time and you can use them when you need them and then you can change like for example you can change desktops for example you can do a lot of things to like keep everything organized and so that when you are in a very heavy development oriented environment like you're using like three different development tools at the same time trying to fix a problem you can just you know, switch back to the desktop environment that you were using before. And this is something that is very, very convenient where like if they have virtual desktops in like say Windows or XFCE or whatever, and you can change them a lot of times, yes, you can change them and you could set up like uh, WM control, for example, and that sort of thing to change with 
Windows 1, Windows 2 to denote the desktop environment that you want to go to. Let me tell you what Linux minimalism is not. And that is like some sort of ploy to save on resources. This is when it becomes a meme. Exactly. Right. Because before that's exactly what it was about. You could open 10 different applications, half of them CLIs and other minimalist type applications and they would use like a gigabyte of ram well now that's not the case because javascript just pings the hell out of your memory every time you run google chrome firefox so unless you are using a browser that completely blocks all javascript or you're using an extension to block all javascript which most websites will not allow you to do in the first place this is a meme because this is just not meant to be taken seriously because as soon as you open up Google Chrome, you're using three gigabytes of RAM. And then if you have a bunch of uh, tabs open like I do, you're using six or eight gigabytes of RAM, maybe even more. So that's a meme. And then, you know, the lady from Bread on Penguins, I wish I knew her name. And go check out her channel because she's totally kicking it right now. But I'm going to tell you that kind of what she was alluding to was, yeah, I could basically edit images in my command line. But why would I do that if I could use Darktable? That was her point. And I think that that is a completely valid point. And this goes back to my point about using OBS and using them snap packs right where i use it because yeah i used to have an ffmpeg script to record my screen and another one to record my webcam and i could pipe them together and put in a bunch of overlays like luke smith used to do and it looked really cool and it used just as much memory as obs if I'm being perfectly honest. And so I honestly don't see the point in doing all of that. Now, if you see the point in doing that, God bless. I, I'm not telling you not to do that. I'm just saying I personally don't see a point in it. And so it becomes kind of a meme for me because it's like, okay, but if it's, hey, I need to keep my fingers on the keyboard as long as possible and jump back and forth between pages in order to, you know, do some of my development work, then I would say, yes, this is where it's not a meme. This is where it's perfectly reasonable. And at this point, I would just say that I don't think personally that you need a tiling window manager. In fact, I don't think you need to just run a bare window manager at all in order to benefit from Linux minimalism. You could do it with XFCE. I don't know if you could do it with Plasma, but I'd be willing to check it out. You might be able to. So I got a question. What happens when you want to use Spotify or Slack or Telegram or any one of these Electron apps that they have today? And this is the only way that you can use those apps because they're Electron apps. And you might as well just be running them in your browser like I am today why I, I don't for the life of me understand what this whole idea about minimalism is when in regards to electron apps then you look at like Arco Linux and not only does he have every electron app you could ever possibly imagine but he uses the apps that consume the most RAM and all of these other things, it isn't about preserving resources anymore. It hasn't been for a very long time. So I hope this clears up any misconceptions that you had about Linux minimalism, because the way it is today, or the way it used to be used, has become kind of a meme, because we're not saving on resources. We're only basically being more efficient with keeping our hands on our keyboard. And that's what all of Linux minimalism is about today. 
What do you guys think? Leave me a comment in the section below. What is Linux minimalism to you? Be sure to check out my most recent upload, or you could binge watch my videos. Have a great one, everyone. Later.